um, the executive director of the Kennebunk, Kennebunk Port Arundel Chamber, and I want to welcome you all here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's our first webinar, so we have a little few kinks to get out, so bear with us. Um, our speaker today is Elena Todenti, and Elena is our membership and tourism manager, um, and we put together some really great tools for you for social, social messaging, because I know right now we're all just trying to do the best we can, um, and I think the first few weeks were very much about just get through it, put your head down, get through it. So now maybe you'll have a little more time to start thinking about how to communicate with customers, communicate with members, and hopefully this will give you some tools to do that today. Um, I'm going to ask Elena when she gets started to mute everyone so that we don't have um, dogs barking and babies crying and all the rest that we've all been guilty of in these last few weeks. Um, and if you have any questions for her, if you could put them into chat, you'll see on your little panel there, there's a chat feature, type them right in there. And then when Elena is done with her presentation, I will refer those questions, okay? So thank you for joining us and we'll begin. Awesome, thank you, Laura. Um, so my question is, how do I mute? Oh, everyone's muted, okay. Um, Welcome. Thank you, everyone, from jo uh, for joining us from your living rooms, bedrooms, um, whichever room you are in. Uh, I'm really excited about this presentation just because uh, social media has been playing a pivotal role um, in a situation that I don't think any of us expected us to be in. Um, so I look forward to answering questions and um, and I'll try and make this quick. Laura always laughs when I say that, um, but I'm going to do my best to, uh, this presentation is more based off of examples and talking through those examples. So hopefully this is informative and um, we can um, all leave knowing something a little bit more. Um, I'm hoping my presentation now. Why isn't it working? Okay, there we go. So we're just gonna go over um, a few, uh, topics. One is the immediate action items that you can take um, that will take max 15 to 30 minutes, um, something that should be done ASAP if it hasn't been done already. Um, and that's just basically going to be a checklist of things to make sure that everything is up to date for your customers. Um, thinking outside the box, I'm not going to delve heavily into this just because we have a panel um, next week about this. And I think everyone should definitely attend that. It's going to be amazing. And I have more details on that later. Um, partnerships, checking in on folks that could use the check-in, um, untable the tabled. It's probably my favorite phrase that I've ever come up with um, because I need to learn from this, um, but hopefully everyone will as well. And then of course, just being you and being your brand um, through this process. So why is social media important? Social media was important prior to this. It was, it's an extremely important tool to be able to share um, and use your voice, your brand voice in a very important way. Um, but now social media is even more important in regards to just the amount of communication that is currently happening. Um, users, you know, there's hundreds of millions of users a day uh, and people are using it from everything for late, late breaking, you know, breaking news to trying to get away from it all and just going to your happy place and seeing pretty pictures. Um, social media is playing an absolutely huge role. And if you've attended my social um, Instagram 101 or 201, I usually have a strict set of rules of how it should be done and everything. And, and for right now, that's all kind of been thrown out the window. Um, because this is such a different scenario that we're all experiencing and we've kind of had to pivot and create different content that we honestly never thought we'd be creating either. So um, social media is a huge asset and huge element uh, to communicate your new messaging. Um, real time, already went over that. And then unique customer interactions. You're no longer having face-to-face -face interactions. The majority of people are no longer having face-to-face -face interactions. So how can you bring those interactions digitally to your customers so you remain top of mind? Okay, take immediate action. These are the immediate points that you can, or um, actions that you can take to at least get your information updated. Is your website updated? 
Um, does it have your current hours, what your processes are, things like that. Make sure it is updated. Same with Facebook. Make sure that there is a relevant post on Facebook and that your hours and your information is updated. Same with Instagram, incorporate it into your bio. Um, if you want people to be contacting you differently, incorporate that. Um, and then Google. A lot of people don't remember that their Google business listing is extremely important to make sure that when people are searching your business, those hours, those functions are updated and, and um, accurate. So with that, I have an example. Um, Allison's, I have to say they get an A plus on this. Um, you go to Allison's um, website and the first thing is, and this is a world, again, you throw that, that list away where pop-ups are not usually your favorite thing. Oh, I hate pop-ups. This is a pop-up on their website and it's brilliant because it immediately gives all the action items that are covered. They are offering takeout only. They offer beer wine. They have all the information right there. So I don't even have to go hunting on the website. And most importantly, if you look on the bottom, click here to buy gift cards online. It is right there. It is a direct action, call to action to click there to purchase gift cards. If you are offering gift cards, that should be front and center on your site. Um, just because you don't want people going through all these different steps, they're, they're going to lose interest. It's right there. Um, and then on the right hand side of the page, you will see Allison's restaurant on their Google listing. It has actually um, dine in is X'd out, and then delivery and takeout is added. They have um, hours or services may differ. That's really, really important for folks to know um, that they are still open, but they have the options listed there. So just try and make sure all those elements are updated. Um, it's really, really important for um, a customer user experience. Um, then be informative. Are you open? Are you closed? Are you getting ready to open? Many of our um, hotels and restaurants are gearing up for opening in May. Um, what are you doing? to gear up? What are your new processes? Um, from a sterilization standpoint, is there gonna be a new training for your housekeepers? Um, wh what are the new processes that are in place? And then social distancing, you've seen probably many people putting tape on the floor, six feet to show in a line that you have to be six feet away from each other. Um, and then creating an alternative, kind of doing a 180 on what you're used to. Um, whether it be a real estate virtual tour through a home because you can't go see the home yourself and you can't be interacting with the realtor um, or curbside pickup, which you never used to offer, but you do now offer. Um, so creating those alternatives to still be actionable and working with your client base. So here are some examples. And again, that list of do's and, <laughs> and don'ts run out the window. I would never, ever recommend this type of Instagram post um, about a month ago. I would never have recommended it, but now it is smart. So this is Hannaford. This is them introducing their um, grocery senior hours in the morning, and it's long. There's text in there. Instagram is not usually a platform for text. <laughs> it is supposed to be pretty pictures but they're getting the word out there and they're giving their explanation and it's a very thorough thought out paragraph. They also have their logo, which is really important from a branding standpoint. Yes, you're on the Hannaford page, but the logo is their additional branding and awareness. Um, so that's really important. The lingerie, they have a picture of the tape. That is where you should be standing. Um, it might seem a little cold, but in this time, it's not, it's smart. Um, so that's really, really smart. And they're only allowing three people in the store. Um, and then Kennebunk Savings, Kennebunk Savings, they're closing their branches on Saturdays. It's a longer post, but it's really important because they're explaining why they are doing it. You can't, you can no longer just say, okay, we're going to be doing this. There has to be an explanation why, and it's really important to share that explanation. Um, once again, with Hannaford, I just wanted to show this site example. You can see that right on the top, they have Hannaford to go has been paused for right now. We all know that 
um, they need those bodies to help restock the shelves. Um, but also they have all their updates right there at the click of a button. Really important. Um, so people aren't hunting all around wondering what their new policies are. Okay, and then here's just some other examples. Um, some of these I shared on our Go Kenny Bunks Instagram stories page. Um, I've been trying to keep everyone in the loop. Information is changing constantly, um, but Bandaloop, they were doing takeout, we were posting that, and then they, they decided to close. Um, and I added a, a little sad cloud, um, you know, but just trying to keep everyone informed. Bradberries usually would never recommend this picture ever, but it's plexiglass. So it's very relevant. They've added plexiglass. So now that there is, um, there's a barrier between the cashier and the customer. That's really, really important. Um, that's a great marketing on their part. Um, Hancock, to go, Hancock to go, they've launched this where basically you can order everything online for pickup. There's minimal face-to-face um, -face interaction. And, um, you know, we're in such serious times. I try to add some fun gifts because I mean, at this point, like anything to make it a little bit like light, more lighthearted as to why we're in this situation. So you got a little saw there and it is what it is. Um, so from a Go Kenamon standpoint, this is actually a story series. It, it was not meant to be a story series. But this is a way of communicating a current situation that you knew might change into another situation and then resolving how you can make that situation better. Um, so two weeks ago, I took a beautiful walk on the beach, but I had heard rumblings that the beaches were, it was a major discussion that the beaches may be closed. So how do we get this messaging out there that people really, really need to follow the guidelines or else there are going to be repercussions? And so I took an amazing walk. It was a beautiful morning with my little guy. And I wanted to showcase this beautiful picture, but at the same time say, it's a beautiful spring day. We know people are gonna be out, but you have to keep your distance. And so we did that. And then not 12 hours later, the announcement came down that the beaches were closing. So we reposted the Town of Catamonks page and informed everyone of that. So the next day, we immediately posted, the beaches are closed, where can we go now? And we listed a bunch of different places that include trails and outdoors and, and that aren't crowded. Um, that was very important. But I also wanted to ensure that we kept the reminder of keep distance. Like even if you're going on these trails, you have to keep the distance. So that was very important. And then on top of that, we've been doing our operation outdoors. And so I was able, we did a walk at Hope Cemetery and we've been trying to do them every weekend, showcasing the different trails in the area. Um, and another element is almost doing a PSA. I know someone that lives near there. She said the parking was really bad and they were blocking her driveway. So I tried to ensure, please do not block driveways when you're parking there. Um, so it's it kind of shows the whole scenario of everything going um, down a certain path. And um, that was really important. That's been really important for us. And as a business, you can do that as well. It doesn't all have to be about your business either. It can be, you know, informative about the community, things like that. Um, that's really important. And people are looking for that information. Okay. Create unique experiences, thinking outside the box. Um, again, I'm not going to delve into this just because we have an amazing panel next week. Um, but you've probably seen a lot of people getting creative, um, doing trivia nights, doing tutorials, doing readings. Um, there's a famous uh, Chris Van Dusen from Maine, a famous author, and he's been reading his children's books online. It's amazing. Um, I'm a little focused on like the, keeping the nine month old occupied. <laughs> so I have a lot of kid examples in my head. Um, but happy hours, virtual happy hours, we're actually going to have our first next week with the chamber after hours. Um, and then seeing brands completely shift gears, like doing a 180 and going a completely different direction, but a direction for good, which is, which is amazing. So here are some of my examples. Um, 
Chris Clough is actually going to be on the panel next week, um, but he's going to be chatting about his virtual trivia night. Um, I am a proud trivia winner um, in person on Thursday nights when they used to host trivia nights. Um, but why not bring it into your home? And that's what they have done. And it's been phenomenal. Um, and it also gives us who are going a little bit stir crazy something fun to do. Um, the Kennebunk Free Library and Graves Library, they're doing their kids reading time um, on Facebook Live. That's an amazing opportunity for folks, um, especially parents <laughs> trying to wrangle their children all day um, to have a little bit of a distraction. When I said about the 180 and brands completely doing something different, my favorite example is Bats and River. Um, they took their distillery and they're actually creating hand sanitizer. Um, that is an amazing, amazing um, feat that they have done. They've created Use Me Hand Sanitizer. And not only are they selling it at HB and Bradbury's and locally, they have donated it to our local police force and fire um, firemen and EMTs. So they're doing good. And um, that's a really, really amazing example. You hear about, you know, GM you know, making ventilators and, and companies switching over and, and creating something different. They, Bats and River saw a need. They have a distillery and they knew they could make it in bulk. And um, that's a really, really fantastic way of making lemonade out of lemons. Um, Old Vines Wine Bar, they're known for their happy hours. They have videos, videos of how to make your favorite cocktails. And, um, you know, the, the real men make cosmos, you know, they're trying to make light of the situation. And, and who knows, many of us probably do need a drink by the end of the day. So um, this is just a fun, a fun program for them. And then HB created a scavenger hunt, um, you know, different things around their house, around your house. And if you bring it in and you've got pictures of everything, you get an ice cream, um, something fun and different and engaging. So partnerships and helping hands, um, a lot of our businesses have been collaborating together and it has been very successful and people giving back, showing support and opening new doors um, across the board. We're very lucky to live in an extremely tight knit community and a very giving community and um, a very creative community. I think this type of experience has made people really, really think differently. And I'm excited to see after this is all passed, how this creativity has leveraged future um, ideas and, and programs. So we're, um, Danielle is actually gonna be on as well from the blue next Tuesday. Um, she's had some great uh, programs, including Texas Grace serving barbecue on Friday and Saturday nights. You call ahead, you order. Um, I have ordered pulled pork and it's delicious. Um, and also businesses are donating first 25 um, cups of coffee to folks. So I know that she had someone this morning, a business that you know, purchase the first 25 cups and um, it brings people by and it keeps business going. Uh, the Daily Sweat has partnered with Minka and the spot River's Edge. The Daily Sweat offers offering four uh, virtual classes, um, Minka offering a beautiful plant and spot River's Edge um, offering a really nice candle. And for $50, you get that whole bundle. And that's just a great way to leverage different businesses and get your name out there in a unique way. And then my favorite example out of this um, is actually COS, um, Community Outreach Services. They have our local food pantry um, that gives out um, meals and food on Fridays. And um, Vinegar Hill reached out to COS a few weeks back and they've actually moved the entire pantry over to Vinegar Hill. And um, Vinegar Hill does an unprecedented amount of um, work with our nonprofits. They're very, very generous in that regard. And now um, COS is based out of Vinegar Hill for the future. Um, right now, to share this news, they actually did an amazing video series giving a tour of all the refrigerators, the tables, how it was going to work. And um, when you speak of doors opening for folks, this was a door opening for COS and Vinegar Hill to partner. And um, we're very thankful um, that they're helping those that really, really need it at this point. So um, that's a great example. 
uh, United Way. They posted um, on Instagram that you could text COVID Maine to 4144 to make a donation. Um, what's amazing is that within the gift section of stories, you can actually add a donate button. Um, so if you have your credit card information saved on your phone, you can easily just, it's like a hop, skip and a jump transaction and you can easily donate right there. And so I reshared it on our stories and I added the donate button and um, that gives people the awareness that they can actually just donate without even taking out their credit card. Um, so another great tool to implement, especially if you're a nonprofit. And then loaves of love, again, partnering with COS, um, purchase a loaf of bread and it gets donated to the um, COS pantry every Friday. And that's a wonderful um, program that Belangerie um, has created. This is gonna be quick, um, just checking in, checking in on your customers, checking in on your staff. Um, Laura sent out an amazing mental health email this morning. Um, it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay for knowing that your customers may not be okay or your staff members may not be okay. Um, but this is a great opportunity to just reach out via, you know, phone, text, Facebook Messenger. You can do story polls. You can do questions. You can keep that conversation going for folks that may not have that company. Um, so that's just really, really important. And, and social, you know, channels can be very important in regards to reaching out. So um, just ensuring that folks are okay. Untable the tabled. Okay, this is the time. I don't have time to do that. My customer, I just, I'm so busy. I just don't have time. I, it, it's just, I, it, it's something that I have to table for next next month. Well, the, <laughs> we're all stuck at home. We know that we have our day to day, but this is the time to untable the tabled. Um, I, have, I need to practice what I preach, creating a social calendar. Um, organizing our photos and creating our photo library for social media, um, learning really how to um, engage in stories. That's really important. Stories are very important. Um, learning how to make live videos or doing videos, things like that. Um, developing your tone. And if you don't have a Facebook or Instagram account, finally creating it <laughs> and understanding how it works and, and um, browsing through the chamber. We've always wanted to do a Pinterest page. We've never really had the, pin, the bandwidth, but that is on my list for the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, th there are so many things that take us away from the day to day, including the phones ringing and everything else. This is the time that you can really delve into this. And it's really, really important. Um, you don't want to go dark during this time. This time is actually where you should probably be more active and remain more top of mind. Um, so test the waters, um, do it on your personal page first, and then you can go on to your business page, but definitely um, you know, create that plan. In addition, while you're creating the social calendar, create that plan for reopening for you know the, the spring season. Um, once this is all over, how are you going to um, vocalize what you guys are doing in regards to, you know, reemerging from this um, shutdown, per se. And then be you. Be authentic. Uh, maintain your voice. Give it some personality. Um, but also be empathetic. I think that's really important. Um, on that Hanover page, um, you may have seen at the bottom, we are closing on Easter because our staff has been working tirelessly and they deserve a day with their family. That's really, really important. That's important verbiage. Um, we all are in this together. And I think um, by vocalizing that it's really important. Um, being creative, have fun, um, you know, show, are you proud of what you've accomplished during this time? Like, I'm sure Bats and Rivers are proud of their hand sanitizer, and they are. They, they should be. Um, that's something that they definitely are communicating, that we, we've created this, and, and it's exciting, and it's something different, and um, it, it's helping others. And then stories, snippets of information, um, you know, communicating to your, your audience and, and your customers, those are also really, really important. 
questions, but I'm just going, before we even delve into the questions, um, this is just an overview of the webinars that are coming up. Um, so we actually have hot off the presses tomorrow. Um, Brad Page, President and CEO of Kennebunk Savings, is going to be answering questions um, all about the loan and funding programs that are available. So that's going to be amazing. Um, and you can email um, director at Go Kenny Bunks for the login information. Um, but we're very excited. This was literally just announced about 20 minutes before I started the presentation. Um, and then on Friday, we have Chris Clough, who's going to be going over all HR um, elements of what it entails, what it involves for COVID and the shutdown, et cetera. And then on Tuesday, we have Doug Sperling leading an amazing panel um, of our local business people who have been really thinking out of the box and creating different um, programming. I mean, from a gym perspective, you can only think of gym as some, a place you're required to go and how they've had to do a 180 and do this all via video. And um, so I'm sure Doug's gonna have some amazing things to talk about there. Um, so I just wanna make sure we, we went over that. But um, questions, Laura, what do we have? We have none, actually. Um, <laughs> not any. Um, I guess, you know, just to throw one out at you, because we went over a lot of material, what is the very first thing you would tell people to do before they even sit down to do anything? What's the first thing they should do to uh, their social accounts? Their social accounts? I'd probably, again, I would probably just make sure the information about opening, about being open or closed and those solutions, that has to be front and center. Um, and also the gift cards. I think the gift cards are really, really important. We have a pay it forward program. If you're not part of it, um, send, shoot me an email at members at Go County Bucks and we can get you part of that. But it's basically a program that's encouraging people to um, pay now and play later. And we would love to include it, um, include your information, but gift cards and, and really communicating out if you're open and closed and if what, what the situation is. I wondered if there's anyone on with us today who could share some of their um, some of their successes if they want to unmute and do that. And oh, look, we do. We have a question from Fiona Robinson. Um, Fiona is with United Way and she heard yesterday that um, on a webinar she was on that social media content specialist should be posting three to four times a day now. And it sounds to her like overkill and oversaturation. Over There's dogs. Um, do you want to take that? Sure. <laughs> My dog is currently snoring under the desk. <laughs> um, so I would definitely, I think this is, this is a tricky one. I think it depends on what you need to share. So uh, for example, we have our three towns, one community group page. We try not to share a ton, but at this point we're sharing a ton because there's a lot of information out there. So I think it honestly depends on what you are sharing. So if there's change in hours, if there's um, different protocol of this, that's all very, very relevant and that should be shared. If, if this were six weeks ago, I would say yes, that's way too much um, because it's just, it's, it can be overwhelming. Um, but if it's relevant information and pertinent information, then share away. Um, but if it's going to be fluffy, I would probably skip, I would probably max fluffy posts to like one a day. Um, but if it's relevant, uh, you, 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 yeah, we're throwing all the rules out the window here. And speaking of throwing all the rules out the window, um, I know a lot of people have email lists and constant contact or MailChimp. Do you want to speak to sort of that digital piece as well? Uh, sure. So email's actually a really, <laughs> rugby starting to bark because he hears your dogs. <laughs> um, so I think one of the big things, email is a great, great digital tool. Um, it's really, it's an important tool. And um we have definitely been, we try and max out at like two to three emails a week on the chamber. And I feel like there's been one going out every day, um, even more than once a day, because information is changing so quickly. If you have an email list and you have not emailed yet, you need to do that immediately. 
um, with a plan of action, um, how you're handling the situation, things like that. Um, I think that's really important. Um, and maybe you come up with a weekly email with, you know, updates or new offerings, things like that. We can definitely help guide you. Um, but that is very, very important. Um, I'm looking at Habitat for Humanity, like have in regards to the builds, have those come to a stop? Um, how can people help? You know, this Habitat for Humanities is going to be needed now more than ever. Um, so there's there's all these and same with United Way, same, all of our nonprofits, you know. Um, and so. I definitely think email is a great way to communicate and, and take advantage of that. Um, I probably wouldn't, based on your business, um, it would never be our recommendation to email, email more than once a day. But um, at this point, with the Small Business Association information changing constantly and the state doing the new mandates, we are doing that. We are emailing more than once a day. Um, but um depending on what information you have to share, definitely make sure that email gets out. Okay, does anyone have any examples they want to share? Um, anything that you've had success with in the last couple weeks? Anything that you need help with specifically in the next weeks to come? And I actually had some question or questions from. We've got a question here. Perfect. Any suggestions about non-essential businesses operating things like curbside or shipping? Oh, I mean, I guess I can answer that. Um, non-essential businesses, curbside is a little trickier. I think right now, um, you know, could you probably do it? Probably. Um, I would suggest checking with the DECD on that. But as far as um, shipping, it's a great time. We've got a lot of local businesses who are doing um, shipping of puzzles and games and things like that. And if there's a way that you can pay online and they can drop it somewhere and you can pick up, that's absolutely doable. I think it's tricky right now for non-essential businesses to really get themselves out there other than the gift cards. But I absolutely think um, using shipping, we've got obviously the post office, we've got Mailed Unlimited, who's got some really clean, um, safe shipping going on. There's ways to get your products into people's hands, and I would definitely do that. Um, any suggestions on how to communicate lengthy new policies or procedures for an essential business? I mean, I would probably say email. Um, but, um, that would probably, I, you may want to put it on your website and then link it back from a social link to it from a social standpoint. So you post on Facebook, you post on Instagram with your, within your profile, um, the link there, and you just share, um, updated information on how we are handling this crisis or, you know, this, these unprecedented times. I feel like that's the, that's the jargon of this situation, unprecedented times. Um, and then have a web page with all that lengthy information. Um, that might be a little too much for Facebook and Instagram. Um, but if it's right there on your website and you can drive people there, that might be, um, most effective. Okay, and I think you said you had a question or two ahead of time, Alina. Yes. So, um, and also, Laura, just to go back to the the, the shipping, another um, out of the box idea. Uh, Day Trip Society is actually creating Easter baskets. Um, they are. You can call them, and um, same with Tallulah's. You can call them, and they are putting together Easter baskets for folks. That's just something because people can't go to their favorite stores and um, that's something that's a little bit different and they're willing to ship and um, do kind of a, a concierge service for Easter baskets. Um, and, and that's pretty amazing too. Um, and it's helpful for families that can't get that procrastinated on their, on their baskets. Um, so this comes from a member so what is the best way to announce that we will be opening with many safety precautions and um, and demonstrate and communicate why our business is essential? So um, I think you have to be very careful with which business is essential and which isn't. And you have to really see if your business is part of that essential business list. 
um, just because you just don't want to muddy those waters. Um, it could bounce back at you. Um, and, and that wouldn't be good. So, but I think the way from an opening standpoint is you can do teasers. You can say, we're getting ready. We're excited. We're getting these amazing shipments and we just got this in. We can't wait to show you in person. Um, so creating kind of those teaser snippets and, and um, also saying this is new in place. Um, we have new hand sanitizer stations that are ready to go when the doors can be reopened. Um, there's all sorts of different ways to kind of tease the opening um, scenario. For example, I mean, our resorts, they have so many different um, precautions that they're going to have to take now, and they're going to have to communicate those out. And um, they'll probably have the longer verbiage on their website, but they can do those little snippets via social. Um, and then... How should I plan on handling pushback in social media comments for our proceed for our procedures or for opening at all? I think the biggest way to handle pushback is one to create um, almost like a question answer form from the get go. Try and think of the questions that people are going to be asking. Have that ready. Do not shut down comments in regards to you have to just be on top of your answers. So you don't want to delete comments. You just, you want to come back and you want to have a thorough response. This is why we're doing this. And um, we are excited to open. We are using every precaution. Um, if you don't feel comfortable now, know that we will be here in four weeks to serve you. And, and once, you know, so I would actually try and, and create those answers ahead of time and have them ready to go so you can post them immediately on social. Even before this time, if you, if you get a bad review or anything like that, you, you don't wanna delete it. You wanna show how you can handle it and how you can kind of rise above that and make it a good customer service experience. And so that is what I recommend on that. Yep. Um, I, I would add to that, um, not to get defensive. Everyone is, you yeah. know, stressful time and there are people unfortunately who have a lot of time on their hands right now who are <laughs> very happily you know just throwing stuff out on social media and and getting people angry and and pushing and you know not doing the right thing if you feel a conversation is going back and forth too much just offer to to take this private here's my number call me i'll send you a private message here's my email i'd love to continue the conversation i would you know not on your business page start a back and forth with an angry person who you know may just be doing it because they're having a bad day and they're an angry person but <laughs> you don't want to see that out there and you don't want to have to go back up and clean it up so you know take that private i i hear your concerns here's my number i'd love to talk to you more and leave it there there are angry um, and people you, online i know it's so weird it's so it's hard weird. to do um, just to add, in case you were worried about the um, essential businesses, I, in the chat, posted the link for the state's current list of essential businesses. Um, there is also, if you go to the state page, a form that you can petition to become an essential business. Um, I have seen a lot of businesses suddenly become essential in the last few weeks, so you might be surprised um, what the DEC does. Um, oh, and we have a question from Robin um, regarding essential. Can you give options such as chiropractic, um, seeing acute pain patients? If they're not comfortable with coming in or not acute, we can do tele-rehab. Um, but you don't want to go too deep because your Facebook page offers basic stretching and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's wonderful. And that's something that you're doing, Robin. Yeah, I was saying that's an option. You can give people options, right? Uh, so I am essential, but I don't want anybody coming in. I just want acute care people coming in. So if you're not that acute and you still want help, we can do tele-rehab. If you don't want to go that deep, okay, you can go to my Facebook page. So if somebody if feels like they're getting pushback, give them options for levels of, with which to engage, was my, what I was saying. That's great, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think that's that's great. Um, and then what is the best way? Okay, what is, oh, that's okay. Already answered that question, so we're good. Um, are there any other questions, thoughts? If you do have questions, please know I am here. 
<laughs> um, in my wonderful home office. Um, and uh, more than happy to chat offline, even if you want to brainstorm or anything uh, of that nature. And I hope this was helpful. I think that's hugely helpful. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, we did record this session and we're going to do our best to get it posted so that if people missed it or if you want to share it with anyone, um, we'll put that out on our pages later and on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions or um, any other topics that you'd like to see us covered, please let us know, drop us a note, um, give us a ring, and we'd be happy to try to put something together or connect you directly to a source. Thank so you thank everyone you. for joining. Have a great day. <laughs>